So you might be in the market for a new set of saw horses. You came across the Bora Speed Horse and said, eh, let me check them out before I spend my hard earned cash. Now the Bora Speed Horse has a bunch of cool features that other saw horses just don't have. That said, there's also one major issue that I found with these saw horses that you definitely want to know about before you go out and buy them. So make sure you stick around for the entire video because you probably don't want to miss this. Now a lot of different trades people use saw horses. Just to name a few you have. Now any maintenance man, carpenter, construction crew, electrician, handyman, carpet installer, painter, insulation installer, auto body tech, metal fabrication, welder. Did I say welder? I think I said welder. Anyway, you get the point. All of these people can benefit from one tool, saw horses. So today we're gonna take a look at the Bora Poramate Speed Horses. A lot of people saying these things are great, but we're gonna put them to the test and see what makes them so cool. Now for the past three weeks, I left these outside in the rain. I wanted to see if any rust developed. I wanted to see if they could hold up outside. You could just leave them there if they would damage. And I'll tell you what, not one issue with them being out in the elements, the weather for the past three weeks. So that's a good plus. We did have one other sawhorse that completely rusted out. I'll bring that to the channel later. So first, let's talk about some of the features on the Bora Speed Horse, and then we're gonna talk about what makes this thing so special. Now, right off the bat, the first thing I noticed was the durability of these. Now, they're a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, but they will definitely hold up to the abuse. Up on top here, you have a textured layer, so that really holds your material in place. It won't slide around on you. I love this, but if you wanted to, you could take a two by four, lay it down on top, and then screw it from underneath, and that'll give you a nice protected surface. Now another nice thing you could do if you wanted to is take your two by four, simply put it in the slot here, slot here, and turn this into a workbench. And there you go, throw a piece of MDF or plywood up on top, you got yourself a workbench. And that's real nice. Now another very cool thing about this is if you want to put pipe or bar or something up here that you did not want sliding around, you could simply take a one by one piece of wood or maybe some metal, throw that down right there in the slot, put one down on each side of the speed horse and now you don't have to worry about any of your pipe or your bar or anything you're working on rolling off the table. So you're probably wondering how much can each one of these support or how much can both of these support weight wise? Well, you're looking at 1500 pounds per speed horse, not for two, for one speed horse, 1500 pounds or 682 kilograms. Now, of course, there was only one way to put this to the test. I had to do what I had to do to make sure that these would withstand the weight that I was needing to apply. Let's do this. As you can see, my video camera malfunctioned during the shoot. Instead of taking video, it simply snapped pictures of me doing my routine. However, this is what we call in the business a handstand. Absolutely beautiful. Let's move it along. This is called a rotating twist. Didn't take me long at all to figure this one out. This is what we call the Apache helicopter twirl. I would like to, however, apologize for my abdominals. They're usually much more firm, but as you can see, I've been letting myself go. Hey, let's see those other tool reviewers do that. Now without the top or the wood piece that I showed you, these are 31 and a half inches tall. If these were any taller, around 32 inches, I wouldn't have been able to do that. All right, so they're saw horses, you say. Okay, what's so special about these? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. Let's close these out first. On the inside, you have a lever. It says leg release. You pull on these things and check this out. Pull up on your brace a little bit. Pull the lever. Whoa! All right, big deal you say. What about releasing them? What about opening them up? Is it that easy? Yes. Remember that try me now button? Let's try it. Now I will say that I wish this was on both sides, but it's not. So you just have to remember which way is easier to grab it and then release it. Now I do want to point out a couple of things about these saw horses. Number one is you're not going to be able to put these together, latch them together and carry them with one hand like you can on some other saw horses. But you do have a handle right here that you can grab one on each hand, simply lift up and carry them with you wherever you need to go. That being said, I'm fine with that because these are heavier duty and if you put them together, well, they might just be way too heavy to carry anyway. Now, another thing I noticed right out of the box when I first started using these is that these legs, even though you got a metal bracket there, all the legs are metal everywhere. 
if you go like this, they're gonna move on you a little bit. I tested those out compared to the DeWalt Sawhorses and the DeWalt Sawhorses do not do that. Now this is where the video got a little interesting. As I was testing this, I was only putting a little bit of weight. I weighed 240, but I was not putting the entire 240 pounds on that. I was just shaking it a little bit. And for as much downforce I could put on these, I was really surprised that this happened. Simply by pushing on those a little bit to the left, they no longer work. I actually bent the inside. You can see that the tab is bent upwards and now I can't get it to go back in. So in two, I figure out how to fix this. This is rendered useless. So let me show you. That's what the inside should look like. After a little force going this way, that's what it now looks like on the other side. You got 1500 pounds on each of these for the downward force. Unfortunately, just because you can't go a little left to a little right, I can't recommend them. Now, with that said, after some intense negotiation, I was able to get these to work again, but that should not have done that. It's not as smooth as it used to be now. I had to hammer it in a little bit. They work again, but they should have been able to take 240 pounds coming this way. But of course, I want to know what you think. Have you used these? Do you plan on using them? What do you think about what happened here? Leave me a comment in the comment section below. I love hearing your feedback. Now, maybe you love these things and you already have a pair and you want to buy another set. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check these out if you want to. Listen, at the end of the day, I want every tool to do well on this channel, but some just don't. There's no reason why these failed the way they failed. If I had a lot of weight, made it even more top heavy and leaned up against this thing, who knows what would have happened. And as mentioned, maybe some of you really love these things and that's great, I'm glad you do. I just don't. I just can't see that these things failed so easily like they did and be able to recommend them. Now Bora does state that they will hold 200 more pounds than any other sawhorse out on the market and that's great but they really need to figure out how to make it more stable in case somebody leaned into it, in case somebody rested something up against it and so on. Now if this video has helped you in any sort of way please smash that like button as it is greatly appreciated. If you like these type of reviews and videos please get subscribed hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any future posts. As always truly appreciate you stopping by we'll be back with more videos tomorrow.